Hello everybody, it's time for another reading, and today we'll be reading Shipping and Handling, the bonus chapters. Cloud Cover in The Shipping Crusades Okay students, settle down, Miss Shirley sang as she trotted into the classroom. You all know what today is, right? It's time for another Family Appreciation Day. A few of the folds in class perked upon hearing the announcement. After all, Family Appreciation Day meant a guest speaker was coming, which in turn meant the day's lecture was ultimately cancelled. Cheerily smiled. Good. I see I've gotten every pony's attention, she said. So today, we'll be meeting a family member of our newest student, Pipsqueak. At the back of the class, Pipsqueak flattened his ears shyly against his head. Um, Miss Cheerily, he piped up hesitantly. I'm sorry, but my uncle's going to be a bit late. He dropped by this morning to tell me that um, he had to take an assignment from work and um, Pipsqueak trailed off, but Cheerily seemed to, did not seem perturbed. Well, that's fine, quick pipsqueak, she said. One's job does come first. Besides, this will give us enough time to finish yesterday's math lesson. The class groaned collectively, and pipsqueak shrank back in his chair a bit as several glares were directed at him. Slowly, the students rummaging through their saddlebags rummaged through their saddlebags and retrieved their math textbooks. Over the next hour, pipsqueak tried to listen to Charlie's lecture, but found it hard to concentrate. His mind was too full of thoughts about the class's reaction to the guest he had selected. After all, his uncle had a somewhat unusual occupation. A rapping at the classroom door startled the pole out of his thoughts. Most of his class looked up expectantly. Oh, this must be our special guest, Charlie said. You all may close your books for now while we turn our attention to our speaker. Charlie opened the door and smiled pleasantly as a white pegasus and a green beret walked into the room. Hello, Cheerily said. You must be Pipsqueak's uncle. It's a pleasure to meet you and have you here for Family Appreciation Day. It's a pleasure to be here, the Pegasus responded. Where is Pip anyway? He glanced around the room, spotting his nephew in the back row. There he is. How are you doing, Pip? Pipsqueak smiled. I'm just fine, Uncle Cloudcover. Great, Cloudcover said. So sorry I'm late. The boss has another assignment, and the others were already busy. But now that... Things are cleared up. We can get started. Wonderful, said Cheerily. Mr. Cloudcover, why don't you tell us about your occupation? Cloudcover grinned. Well, of course, he agreed. As Pip knows, my job is a little different than that of most ponies. I don't work in, at any normal business. My job is actually different every day. I travel all over Equestria helping various ponies in need. Like a superhero? Scootaloo asked excitedly. Do you save ponies in awesome ways like Rainbow Dash? No, not quite like a superhero, Cloudcover laughed. My job is a, li a little harder to explain. But I've been talking with my boss and my wonderful co-workers and figured out the best way to, exp to explain it to all of you. He took a deep breath. You see, kids, I work at a small Ponyville-based establishment called Equestria Speedy Shipping Services. To Pipsqueak's relief, Cloudcover really had spent a fair amount of time preparing for his speech, and his method of describing the shipping profession to the students was not unlike the one Ditsy Doo had used to explain it to her dinky. The whole class seemed riveted by the idea of such an unusual job. Even Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon seemed to be listening respectfully. And that's basically how it works, Cloudcover said, bringing the explanation to a close. A small group of us are given assignments almost every day to help ponies bring their relationship ideas into reality. It's a lot of work, but it's a great feeling to see the pony you help starting off a whole new relationship. Cloudcover finished his speech. Charlie and the students applauded. A few fillies in the front row exchanged excited glances. Wonderful, Charlie said. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Cloudcover. And thank you, Pipsqueak, for choosing such an interesting guest for today. Cloudcover smiled humbly. Thanks, ma'am. It was a pleasure to be here. Charlie nodded. Okay, students, it's time for recess, she announced. Cloudcover leapt into the air to avoid the stampede of folds beneath him as they all charged outside. They're so full of energy, he commented. Well, you know how foals are, Charlie said. You better go outside and say goodbye to your nephew before you head back to work. All right, Cloudcover said. Thanks again for letting me visit. The Pegasus turned and trotted out the door, unaware that his otherwise average day was about to descend into chaos. Did you hear that, girls? Did ya? Applebloom giggled. Jumping excitedly around her friends, the stallion's got a job as a shipping pony. We gotta go talk to him, 
I reckon this is an opportunity we ain't gonna find anywhere else. Who cares? Scootaloo groaned. Who would want a job like that anyway? Helping Pony with her namby pamby lovesick fantasies. Besides, haven't we had enough of what after what happened with Charlie and Big Macintosh Lots last Hearts and Hooves Day? This is different, Apple Bloom argued. Pip's uncle helps ponies who actually want help with their relationship, unlike Miss Cheryl Lee, and he does it with methods that don't involve brainwashing love potions. We should at least go talk to Pip's week, Sweetie Belle said. I mean, do you girls remember the time that we were helping Dinky and Twist spy on Dinky's mom? The paper we found mentioned Equestria Speedy Shipping Services, the same place Pip's uncle works. Hey, you're right, Apple Bloom realized. We need to at least ask Mr. Cloudcover if he knows Dinky or Mrs. Dew. Oh, alright, Scootly agreed, but just because we haven't heard much about Dinky lately. That's the spirit, Scoot, Apple Bloom said as she led the Crusaders across the schoolyard. The three fillies hesitantly approached their classmate, who was still in conversation with his, with his uncle. Hi, Pip, Sweetie Belle greeted. Oh, hi, girls, Pip Squeak replied. Did you like Uncle Cloudcover's presentation? Did we ever, Apple Bloom said. Your uncle was a really cool job, Pip Squeak. Yeah, if you like that sort of thing, I guess, Scootaloo said. Actually, Mr. Cloudcover, Sweetie Belle continued, we wanted you, we wanted to ask you something. Does Mrs. Dew work at the same place as you do? Oh, you mean Ditsy? Cloudcover laughed. Yes, Ditsy is actually our most successful employee. Her daughter used to go to this school, or so Pip tells me. Yep, but I only get to see Dinky on the weekends now, Pip Squeak said. So that was the big secret, Sweetie Belle said to her friends. Dinky's mom was trying to hide the fact that she was working at Esquestria Speedy Shipping Services for a while. Cloudcover snorted. Yes, but that was all sorted out eventually, of course, he said. So do you really travel all over Equestria to help ponies in love every day, Apple Bloom asked. Cloudcover smiled proudly. Yes, there is a lot of adventure and strategy in this line of work. Being a shipping pony isn't as easy as it might sound. You have to be ready to work with any kind of pony and to deal with new situations every day. Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle exchanged glances. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? The Earth, the Earth Billy asked her friends. That maybe we don't have our cutie marks because we're actually meant to be shipping ponies? Sweetie suggested. Apple Bloom grinned. I think it might be time for the next cutie mark crusade. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Scootie, Scootaloo interrupted, wedging herself between her friends and forcing their huddle apart. That would be the lamest thing ever. What kind of pony would want a cutie mark for doing a job like that? <clears throat> you girls know I hate all that gushy lovey dovey stuff. But Scoot, Apple Bloom countered, they mentioned adventures. We wouldn't just be helping ponies, we'd be going to parts of a question we ain't even seen before. And the helping ponies part isn't even that mushy, Sweetie Belle added. It sounds like fulfilling another pony's request takes a lot of skill. You might even have to spy on the target pony to find some crucial information. And we both know you like spying, right, Scootaloo? Scootaloo shifted her wings. Yeah, but besides, Apple Bloom interrupted. You always get to pick what we do to look for our crusade. Blah. You always get to pick what we do to look for our cutie marks. We've been all over Ponyville and done all sorts of crazy and dangerous things just because you suggested them. Can't Sweetie and I pick what we're doing for once. Scootaloo sighed. Fine, we'll give it a shot, she agreed, though she didn't look happy about it. Now hang on there, kids, Cloudcover said nervously. I know you all have big plans in the works here, but you can't really just walk into town and expect to find a pony who needs relationship help. Apple Boom nodded. Believe it or not, we've already learned that lesson. Pipsqueak's eyes lit up as he was suddenly struck with the idea. Hey, Uncle Cloudcover, he began. What if we all go to Aquasha Speedy Shipping Services? Do you think your boss would let four of us come on an assignment with you? What? Cloudcover gasped, backing up slightly. Now, Pip, I'm not sure that's a very good idea. Oh, come on, Mr. Cloudcover, Applebloom said. The three of us won't be any trouble, honest. And if you let us come along, we might actually find our cutie marks, Sweetie Belle added. Cloudcover turned his head, glancing back and forth before eagle fo eager folds. Finally, he hung his head in defeat. Fine. After class, we'll walk over and see what Dr. Candyfloss says. I'm in the clear now, Cloudcover thought to himself. There is no way Candyfloss will think sending four foals along in a shipping assignment is a good idea. I think that sounds like a wonderful idea. 
The four foals smiled in excitement. The one Pegasus buried in his <laughs> the one Pegasus buried his face in his hooves in sheer disbelief. But boss, Candy Cool. Hold on, I need to pause the video on on not my twisted tongue. But boss, Cloud Cover attempted to argue. Just think about this. Shipping can be a very delicate profession. Do you really think sending four completely untrained foals along on a shipping assignment is a good idea? Kenny Floss chuckled. As I recall, Mr. Cloudcover, we all have to start somewhere, he pointed out. When I sent you out on your first assignment all those years ago, did you have any prior experience? Well, no, but... And I believe your nephew has seen your work in the past, so if anything, he's more prepared than you were on your first day. But what about the others? Cloudcover asked. These three fillies, they don't know anything about shipping. What does it matter? Kenny Floss asked calmly. It's not like we're sending them out on an assignment. They'll be chaperoned by an employee, of course. But they're only foals. Yes, but foals are not inherently inept, Candy Floss argued. They are often just in need of the right guidance. I'm confident that even these foals could benefit from such an experience like this, provided they are shown the proper s process by a calm, level-headed instructor such as you. Cloud Cover was unable to come up with a response. It's only one assignment, my friend, Candy Floss added softly. It's not like we're hiring a lot of them, permanently or anything. Although, I dare say if one of them turns out to have some natural talent for this, we could definitely make them as a, make them a future prospect. But for now, it will provide a rich and educational experience for them. Cloud Cover asked, there really was no way to win an argument with some pony like Candy Floss. Okay, I'll let them tag along. Excellent, Dr. Candy Floss said, beaming, as he noticed the smiles on the faces of the four foals. I already know Pipsqueak, but three these three are Apple Bloom. Okay, but you three are Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle, and Scootaloo, correct? The Crusaders nodded, and Candy Floss scribbled something briefly into one of his records, and then tucked it away in his overflowing cat file cabinet. I hereby dub the four of you temporary interns at Equestria Speedy Shipping Services. Cloud Cover is your direct superior, and you shall do whatever he says in regards to your shipping assignments. Is that clear? Yes, sir. The Crusaders and Pipsqueak all chatted in unison. Very good, Kenny Floss said, scrolling the address of the next client into a sheet of paper and passing it to Cloud Cloud Cover. I wish all five of you the best of luck on today's assignment. Thank you, sir, the four foals giggled as they charged out of the room. Yeah, thanks a lot, boss, Cloudcover mumbled. Candy Floss Wing, don't be such a spoil sport, spoil sport Cloudcover, he said. You've only been an employee here longer than any of your co-workers. You can handle this. Cloudcover just nodded and charted from the room. Cloudcover trotted up the steep pathway leading to the address Candy Floss had indicated, listening to the chatter of the four folds behind him. His stomach nodded as he thought of the potentially disastrous events that could come to pass once they reached their destination. The young pony trotted along behind him, seemed as eager as ever, unaware of his uneasiness. There were clearly no way out now. He would just have to trust Candy Floss's judgment and hope the four of them didn't completely ruin the assignment. Cloud Cover arrived at the house. Well, here we are, kids, he said uneasily. The house seemed average enough, but it was situated near the edge of a steep cliff. Below was a vast valley, mostly hidden by shadow, since the city of Cloudsdale was directly above. Cool, Scoodlu said, looking up at the cloudy citadel. I wish the assignment was actually in Cloudsdale. Then what would the rest of us do? Sweetie Belle asked. You and Mr. Cloud Cover are the only Pegasi here. Oh, yeah, Scootaloo replied with a sheepish, with a sheepish smile. Ugh, it's hard. The four of you just stay back th here and let me talk to the client, Cloud Cover instructed. Then you can help. Cloud Cover reached up and pounded on the door with a hoof a few seconds later, and then suddenly the door was yanked open, revealing one of the most intimidating mares Cloud Cover had ever laid his eyes on. The resident of the home was a pale purple Pegasus with a wild, spiky, whitish mane and a shooting star as a cutie mark. Her purple eyes were outlined in a bit of dark makeup, which accentuated the glare she was giving him, giving her the visitors. What do you want? 
the mayor asked irritably. Um, well, Cloud Cover began, trying to regain his composure he had lost when he had countered the somewhat frightening mayor. Hello, ma'am. Did some pony at this address contact Equestria Speedy Shipping Services? The mayor's face contorted into a barely concealed rage. Excuse me one moment, sir, she said, quickly closing the door. Cloud Cover waited, despite the fact that the door was now closed. The mayor's voice was clearly audible. Flitter, I told you not to call these guys. For the last time, I'm not in love, and I don't need a stupid shipping service. There was a high-pitched giggle. Oh, stop pretending, sis, came another new voice, which sounded considerably friendlier than the first one. You're completely head over hooves for that stallion. Since you weren't going to do anything about it, I went ahead and did it for you. Now let the poor shippers in. No. Fine, then I will. Hoofsteps sounded behind the door, and it opened once again, this time revealing a much less disgruntled-looking Pegasus mare. She had the same pale purple coat and eyes as the first mare, but her mane was a light aqua color and neatly brushed. Her cutie mark was a trio of dragonflies, and she wore a rather large pink bow atop her head. Oh, hi there, she said sweetly. You must be from the shipping service. Come on in, and don't worry about what my sister says. She's a little grumpy. The other, more ir irritable mare, who was standing some feet away, narrowed her eyes. The friendly of the, of the two glanced behind Cloud Cover and noticed the presence of the foals. Um, are they with you? Cloud Cover nodded. This is some sort of trial program, he explained. I get to show my nephew and his three friends the ins and outs of this job. The mayor smiled. Well, in that case, why don't the five of you sit in the living room? I'll bring you some refreshments. That got the attention of the Crusaders and Pipsqueak. They all darted past Cloudcover into the house. A few moments later, the five of them were seated comfortably inside as a cheerful mare approached with a fresh plate of cookies. She grinned as the foals dug into the, pile of the small pile of sweets. My name is Flitter, by the way, the mayor mentioned. I actually called on behalf of my sister. She claims she doesn't need your help, but she does. I do not, came the sister's voice from the next room. Nice to meet you, Flitter. Cloudcover responded politely. Flitter giggled. Oh, I love your accent, she, she laughed. Wait, don't tell me. Are you from Charlingham? Uh, yes, I am, Cloudcover replied, pleasantly surprised that another one of the locals recognized his accent. Um, you can call me Cloudcover. Flitter blinked in surprise. Your name is Cloudcover? Yes, why? Well, this might be a bit confusing, Flitter laughed. But my sister's name is Cloud Chaser. She frowned, speaking of which, why don't you show the common courtesy and get in here, Cloud Chaser, she she called. Just gonna put a little out there, but I think that she might like Snowflake. Or, or uh, I don't know what other people call it, I just call it Snowflake. Um, Cloud Cover walked slowly into the room and sat down across her So said Apple Bloom through oh wait. Cloud Chaser walked slowly into the room and sat down across her sister. So said Apple Bloom through a mouthful of cookie, can you tell us any more about the assignment you called? Sure, said Flitter, ignoring her sister scowl. Oh yeah, they call him Roy Rage, I call him Snowflake. <clears throat> Cloud Chaser here really has it bad for this stallion named Thunderlane. I was so wrong! You're acting like I'm obsessed with him, Cloud Chaser argued. I just think he's cool, okay? Whatever, said Flitter in a sing song tone. So the problem is, Cloud Chaser here is a little afraid to make a move and ask Thunderlane out herself, and now it might be a little too late. Too late? What do you mean? Well, recently Thunderlane's been spending a lot of time with this other mare who lived into who moved into Cloudsdale a few months ago named Blossom Fork, Flitter explained. There's no evidence that they're a couple yet, but they probably will be if Cloud Chaser doesn't toughen up and ask him out first. But now she's even more worried because of the potential competition. It's not likely that she'll work up the courage to ask him any time soon, Flitter grinned mischievously. Isn't that right, sis? Cloud Chaser pushed her bangs out of her face. Well, yeah, but so what? I just get a little nervous around Thunderlane. But who wouldn't? 
I can't help that he's so fast and strong and suave and totally hot, Flitter asked. Cloud Chaser blushed furiously. Well, c kind of. Flitter laughed again. So that's why I called you guys, she concluded, turning back to Cloud Cover and his assistants. Do you think you can set Cloud Chaser up on a date with Thunderlane before Blossom Force steals him from under her nose? Perhaps, Cloud Cover answered, but first we have to... Oh, oh, I know this part, Pipsqueak interrupted. We can't take the assignment unless the actual client agrees, right? Correct, Pip, Cloud Cover said. Miss Cloud Chaser, I realize that you are hesitant to ask for help. And we will not pursue this unless you want us to, no matter what your sister says. Policy is policy. Cloud Chaser sighed. Well, you did come all this way out here, she admitted, and I'm sure the little interns you have would be a little disappointed if I reject you. So, since Flitter is technically right about everything she said, I guess there's no harm in letting you. Cutie Mark Crusaders! Shipping ponies! Yay! <laughs> The crusaders cried suddenly, startling the other assembled ponies. The three of them crowded round Cloud Cover and Scoodaloo Yanks Pipsqueak into their huddle as well. Okay, boss, Scooty Bell said. What's the plan? Cloud Cover admired the eagerness of his interns, at least. All right, here's what I think we should do. Some of us are going to need to go to Cloudsdale and try to find out a little bit more about Thunderlane, as well as this Blossom Forth we keep hearing about. We can't all go since most of you can't walk on clouds, and I can't certainly carry the whole lot of you around my, around on my back. Cloud Cover glanced at Flitter, who was still standing across the room with her sister. By the way, Flitter, can you tell me more about this Blossom Forth? What does she look like? Oh, she's kind of a cutie, you know, a white, a little white pony, pink and green mane, flowers as a cutie mark. She sounds a bit more, um, feminine. And your sister, Cloud Cover observed, but Flitter and Cloud Chaser nodded. Maybe Thunderlane is more attracted to more girly girls, Cloud Cover suggested. That gives me an idea. He turned to the group of ponies gathered around him. Girls, why don't you th why don't you three stay here? I need you three and Flitter to uh go give Cloud Chaser a bit of a makeover. Cloud Chaser's eyes widened in panic. Nothing too extreme, Cloud Cover said hesitantly. It's just that the current, she's a bit... Oh, uh, how do I put this? She looks like a total punk, Glitter said, ignoring her sister's glare. Well then, we just need to make her a bit less uh, punkish, said Cloud Cover awkwardly. You can handle that, right? Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle nodded, but Scootaloo looked irate. Hang on there, buddy, the Pegasus Philly piped up. There's no way I'm going to sit here and watch these two turn this awesome-looking Pegasus into a pretty princess while you two go on the great in... while you two go to the greatest city in Akrusha without me. I'm coming to Cloudsdale, too. Cloud Cover put a hook to his chin. Come to think of it, having another Pegasus along could be useful, he admitted. Exactly, Scootaloo said. I can help you guys get some dirt on Thunderlane and Blossom for it. All right, it's settled then, Cloud Cover said. Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle, and Flitter will help Cloud Chase to get herself looking a bit more presentable, while Pipsqueak, Scootaloo, and I head to Cloudsdale. We'll meet back here later. We've got everything under control here, Flitter said, winking slyly at Cloud Cover's direction. Just take those two and go do what you need to do. Cloud Chaser glanced rapidly around at the sisters and the shippers. Why do I suddenly have a bad feeling about this, she said uneasily. Too late for second thoughts, Flitter giggled. Operation Thunderlane is underway. <sighs> you two are heavier than I thought, Cloud Cover gasped as he beat his wings furiously to try to lift himself and the flow was on his back to the edge of Cloudsdale. I can get off once we're there, Scoodly pointed out. I can walk on cloud I can walk on clouds so it's fine. I can walk on clouds just fine. I just can't fly. Cloud Cover sighed with relief at that thought. A few strenuous minutes later, he finally landed on the fluffy outer rim of the city, where he then collapsed for a few moments to catch his breath. Scooby hopped off and looked around the city in awe. Aw, oh, yeah, this place is ev every bit as cool as I'd hoped, she said excitedly. I've wanted to visit Cloudsdale for ages. No time for sightseeing, I'm afraid, said Cloud Cover, groaning slightly as he staggered to his feet with Pipsqueak still on his back. 
we need to find this Thunderlane fellow, he frowned. Unfortunately, I'm not exactly sure what he looks like, he admitted sheepishly. Oh, I know who he is, Scooby announced, hopping around excitedly. I've seen him around Ponyville before. He's kind of easy to spot. Scooby ran off towards the center of town, and Cloud Cover was no real with no real option, trotted along behind. The filly stopped very suddenly, and he only barely managed to avoid crushing into her. Shh! There he is, Scooby whispered. I don't have any good disguises in my saddlebag, so these will have to do for now. Scoodloo handed two pairs of ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculously large sunglasses to Cloudcover, motioning for him to pass one of Pipsqueak. Cloudcover decided it was better not to question the filly's logic for now. Once he had donned the clever disguise, Cloudcover looked at the pony Scoodloo was indicating. He was a very athletic-looking Pegasus indeed, with a dark coat and mohawk-style mane. He looked tough and headstrong, a strangely perfect match for Cloud Chaser. Uh, well, uh, in appearance, at least. But yet, this stallion was supposedly spending time in a, with a much more ladylike mare. What do you need to know when we... Wait, what? What do we need to know that we found him? Pip Squeak whispered to his uncle. I'm not sure, Cloud Cover responded. It would be more useful if we could see what he does when he encounters the other mare in question. Oh, hey, Blossom Forth, Thunderlane said, smiling a little at a cheery looking mare who had just exited a nearby market. Cloud Cover blinked in surprise. Well, that kind of simplifies things, doesn't it? Hi there, Thunderlane, Blossom Forth giggled. So, are you ready to hang out tomorrow? Am I ever, Thunderlane said ecstatically. We're going to have the whole day of fun, I promise. I can't wait, Blossom Forth replied. I just hope you're not planning to make me pay for you again. Come on, Blossom Forth. What do you take me for? Thunderlane said, feigning offense. I told you, I'd pay you back, so I'm paying for everything tomorrow. I'll even buy dinner. Aw, that's so sweet, Blossom Forth replied. Ugh, man, I'm so stuffy right now. Sorry if I sound a little nasally. Even though it's, you know, it's like. 15 minutes into the recording or somewhat. I don't know. I'm not looking at the timer, but uh, if I have to sound a little stuffy, it's because stuffy. Totally, Thunderlane agreed. Later, Blossom. Bye, Blossom Forth called as she and Thunderlane trotted in opposite directions. Cloud Cover and his two assistants stood in the shadow, watching their target disappear into another thin, cloudy causeway. Are we too late? Pipsqueak asked hesitantly. It sounds like those two are going on a date tomorrow. Yes, it would seem our client has waited a little too long, Cloud Cover agreed as he removed the ridiculous looking sunglasses Scoodloo ins insisted he, he wear. It's regrettable, but we should probably just go tell Cloud Chaser to give up on this one. What? Give up already? Scoodloo cried suddenly. I thought you shippers were tougher than that. But Scoodloo, you heard the conversation, Cloud Cover said. Don't you think it would be a bit strange to set Cloud Chaser up with a pony who has a date with a different mare tomorrow? Do you know it's a date? I didn't hear the word date, Scootloo insisted. I know I said you shipping ponies have the kind of lame job, but it's even lamer if you don't at least try to fulfill the client's request. If there's one thing Rainbow Dash has taught me, it's that you should never give up, no matter how bleak the outlook is. Color Cover stepped back, a bit shocked by the filly's fortitude. For a moment, he was unable to reply. Maybe Scoot's got a point, Pipsqueak added. We don't know for sure that Thunderlane wouldn't even consider it. We could at least try. Cloud Cover laughed softly. Well, all right, he agreed. I suppose we are giving up too easily here. Cloud Chaser is willing to go for it, so we should be too. Let's go leave an anonymous note for Thunderlane that should get him to show up for a clout with Cloud Chaser tonight. Then we'll have to leave things to fate. If he's already together with Blossomforth, then it will become apparent when he arrives. He sighed, despite the grins of approval from Pipsqueak and Scootaloo. I just hope this isn't going to be completely pointless, he added. I wonder if Flitter and the other fillies are doing a good job down there. Cloud Cover turned to, and began to trot to the edge of edge of Cloudsdale. Hit Scootaloo? Yeah, Pipsqueak? Can I keep these sunglasses? It's too late to change my mind about this, Cloud Chaser asked weakly. Oh, wait. Is it too late to change my mind about this? Cloud Chaser asked weakly. Yeah, said Flitter, smiling devilishly. 
I've been waiting a long time to make a chance to make you look less ridiculous. I'm not letting you get away from me this time. Cloud Chaser rolled her eyes. Glad to hear you approve of my fashion, says. Sis, she grumbled sarcastically. She shifted uncomfortably, but was unable to make any move or to escape. Flitter had anticipated her sister having second thoughts about the situation, and decided the best way to deal with it was to simply tie her to a chair. In retrospect, it was probably a smart move on Flitter's part, Clouches realized. If it wasn't bound, I definitely wouldn't be here. Relax, Miss Cloud Chaser. Apple Bloom was absently. Wait, what? Apple Bloom said absently, as she rolled unrolled some ribbon. I ain't gonna be all that bad. We're just gonna make a couple of changes to your mane and tail to make you look more respectable, like. And Sweetie Belle's sister is a fashion designer, so she'll probably get an eye for some kind of things like this. I bet she can pick out something lying around here that'll make you look great. Um, Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle cut in. Rarity hardly lets me near, you know. The fashion supplies, and, you know, the boutique, and, you know, Ponyville. So, uh, well, let's get started, Apple Bloom said, ignoring Sweetie Bell's argument entirely. Now, where are those scissors? Wait, are you going to be actually cutting my mane? No, I'm not that confident, Apple Bloom replied. I just need scissors to, for this stubborn ribbon. The filly yanked on the colorful strand a few more times before Sweetie Belle finally managed to locate the scissors. Cloud Chaser's view of the filly's antics was suddenly obscured by Flitter as she applied a bit of wet cloth to her face. Hey, what are you doing? Hold still, Flitter said crossly. I'm just trying to ma get that dark makeup around your eyes off. Oh. <clears throat> off. Now stop squirming or it's gonna smear. Cloud Chaser snorted and sat still, trying not to fidget as she felt Apple Bloom trying some part of her mane with a now neatly cut ribbon. Sweet Bell, Flitter began, my closet's in the next room. Why don't you see if you can find something nice for Cloud Chaser to wear? Uh, okay, said Sweet Bell hesitantly as she trotted into the next room. She opened Flitter's closet and stared at the array of dresses. Okay, Sweetie thought, tapping her hook against her chin. I need to think like Rarity here. If I was making a dress for a pony like Cloud Chaser, what would I want to look like? Sweetie Belle scanned the rack, her eyes eventually settling on a simple, pale, yellow outfit. It was not particularly frilly, but then again, she assumed Cloud Chaser was probably not going to appreciate something too elaborate anyway. Hoping she'd seen enough of her older sister's work to trust her own judgment, she grabbed the dress and scurried back to Cloud Chaser's room. Oh, that's perfect, Flitter squealed as soon as Sweetie entered. Here, let's put it on. Cloud Chaser was finally released from the chair. She just sighed as her sister forced the dress over her head. There, Flitter announced, standing back and admiring her handiwork. Look in the mirror. What do you think? Cloud Chaser turned around and glanced into the mirror. For a moment, she wasn't even sure it was her own reflection staring back. Her spiky mane was now carefully groomed so that it was not, so that the unusually unruly bangs now formed a nicely rounded style. The spikes on top of her head flattened down as well and back straight straight and the back straight if her tail had been groomed it looked longer and silkier than she had remembered it and the ribbon apple bloom had tied near the tip caused it to curl at the end the dress fit nicely and the removal of her heavily applied eyeliner had indeed softened her usually harsh appearance cloud chaser tried but she couldn't quite bring herself to hate the new look it was definitely different from her usual appearance sure but she felt strangely attractive nonetheless this this isn't bad, she mumbled, wincing slightly at her sister's resulting arrogant grin. You think Thunderlane will like it? A flitter scoffed. Sis, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a scallion that wouldn't like it. The sound of several sets of hooves approached, signaling the return of Cloud Cover. Okay, ladies, he said as he trotted into the bedroom. We set up a blind date for Cloud Chaser and Thunderlane tonight. Dear Celestia, you look different. Cloud Chaser nodded. Yeah, thanks for noticing, she said curtly. Cloud Cover blushed. I perhaps... That came out rather disrespectfully, she stammered. You look great. Your sister did a fine job. Flitter giggled. Aw, oh, thanks, she chirped. But the girls were a big help, too. Yes, you're all good at feeling awesome about yourself, Cloud Chaser deadpan. But what was that about Thunderlane? Cloud Cover collected himself. Yes, um, we slipped Thunderlane an anonymous note. He's expecting to meet a date tonight at the trendy place in town called the Great Corral. 
but you should be aware that we overheard him speaking with Lazaforth, and it sounds like the two of them are already in a relationship. Clouch chased aside. I thought something like this might have happened, she admitted. Maybe it's too late. Don't worry, sis. He'll forget, a Blas He'll forget about Blossom once he sees you. Um, is this becoming kind of like a homewrecker thing? I'm not exactly sure where this is going. This is really comfortable, Sweetie Belle remarked. Shh, Avaloom said. I know it's a bit cramped. Oh, this is really uncomfortable, Sweetie Belle remarked. Shh, Avaloom said. I know it's a bit cramped, but we'll have to deal with it if we want to keep an eye on Miss Cloud, Cloud Chaser. Cloud Cover, Apple Bloom, and Sweetie Belle... A Scoodloo, Pipsqueak, and Flitter were all crammed into a small booth in the back of the corral, where they could discreetly watch Cloud Chaser's day. Unfortunately, the tiny booths weren't meant for so many ponies. Cloud Cover shifted uneasily as Flitter's flank brushed against his. So, now, what do we do, Uncle Cloud Cover? Pipsqueak asked quietly. Nothing, really, Cloud Cover replied. Glad for some actual conversation to lighten the awkwardness, we've done our part. Now we have to wait to see if Cloud Chaser's day is successful or not. He stared across the restaurant, where Cloud Chaser sat nervously at another table, waiting. After a few moments, Thunderlane entered the restaurant and looked towards the table indicated on the note he had received. He raised an eyebrow in surprise. This is it, Cloud Cover whispered. Let's see what he says to her. Thunderlane approached the table as if it in a trance. The two ponies stared at each other for for a few rather awkward seconds. Hi, Cloud Chaser finally managed. Hey, Cloud Chaser, Thunderlane said. So you're my dinner guest? Yeah, the mayor responded. I mean, if that's cool with you. It's cool. <laughs> Good guy, Greg. Sitting down, I just thought, I mean, it's kind of a surprise, that's all. From their vantage point, Cloud Cover and the others were unable to hear most of what they were saying, but judging by the appearance, the date did not appear to become any more comfortable than any more comfortable with time. Cloud Chaser appeared to be attempting to start a conversation again and again, but each time Thunderlane's curt answer would instantly settle the matter, and the pair would decline into silence once again. Oh man, this is my pet peeve, but you could have a dinner with no awkward silence it's just silence but it's like mutual silence mutual silence that's great that's great um progress this isn't going any well anywhere what whoa that's it whoa that was weird i like read it completely wrong but like the words didn't make sense <clears throat> let me try that again this isn't going well at all is it flitter whispered I don't think so, Cloud Cover replied. But then again, if Thunderlane is actually dating Blossomforth, having dinner with another mare he knows must be at least somewhat awkward for him. I guess it really is true, Flitter said warily. I thought maybe he and Blossomforth weren't actually together yet, but judging by how he's acting, Flitter quieted suddenly as Cloud Chaser and Thunderlane, having having finished their meal, stood up. Well, thanks for the food and the meal, said Thunderlane plastering a fake smile across his snout. We'll have to do it again sometime. Cloud Chaser stared at her day for a few moments and shook her head. Nah, forget it. I can tell you you had a lousy time. I didn't have a lousy time, Thunderlane said defensively. Dinner was great, really. Cloud Chaser laughed darkly. Nice try. You spent the whole time whole meal you spent the whole meal trying to end the conversation. You're desperate to get away from me, so go ahead. It's not like that. I I was just a little distracted. By what? Cloud Chaser mentally prepared herself for the moment when Thunderlane spilled the beans and admitted his relationship with Blossomforth. Surprisingly, he said something totally different. I've known you for a long time, Cloud Chaser continued, so no offense, but I was kind of surprised to see you in public looking, well, like that. Cloud Chaser's mouth dangled open. Wait, so do you mean you like it? It looks great, said Thunderlane quickly. It's just, you know, I'm used to seeing a little bit more, you know, tougher. I guess it suits you. Cloud Chaser's eyes widened. I, uh, I gotta agree with you there. I kind of just thought you were more into the girly type, so I dressed up a little. Thunderlane raised his eyes. Where'd you get that idea? He asked incredu incredulously. Cloud Chaser bit her lip. Well, uh, I heard some stuff about Blossomforth and... Blossomforth? Thunderlane asked. 
What's she got to do with anything? We're just because we're cousins doesn't mean we have the same ideal and style. Clutch is your gaze. Wait, Blossomport's your cousin? Thunderlane nodded. Yeah, he admitted. Since she moved into the area, she's been hanging with me since she doesn't know a whole lot of Pegasi here yet. She's pretty cool though. The two of us are just going to the amusement park, amusement park tomorrow. He frowned. Although, I gotta pay for both of our admissions since I forgot to bring any money the last time the two of us went anywhere. His expression brightened. Say, since you thought of dinner was kind, since you thought this dinner was kind of a bust, maybe you could come along to make up for it. And Blossom totally wouldn't mind the extra company. Clutch Chaser actively worked to, to prevent the huge dopey smile that was attempting to spread across her face. Sure, sounds like fun, she replied, managing to retain a calm tone of voice. Awesome, Thunderlane said. You and I can hang off for real then. His smile shrank for a moment. And, uh, you're ditching the new look, right? Cloud Chaser responded by tearing the ribbon out of her hair and shaking her mane loose until it resembled her original state. Better, she asked. Better, Thunderlane agreed. See you tomorrow, Cloud Chaser. Bye. She called up to the stallion as he trotted out the door. A few seconds of silence followed, and then the sound of several sets of hooves approached. Cloud Chaser turned around to see and came nose to nose with her beaming sister. See, Flitter said, I told you this was a good idea. If you hadn't gone and tried something, you would still think Blossom Forth was Thunderlane's mare friend, when really she was just his cousin. I have to admit, I hadn't expected that cl outcome, Cloudcover asked, said, but I suppose this means the assignment was successful after all? The cutie mark crusaders all gaped at the word success and quickly checked their flanks. Alas, there was still no cutie mark to be found, but at this point, they were hardly deterred by the result. The seven ponies exited the restaurant, trotting into the late afternoon sunlight. Cloud Chaser hesitantly hesitated before turning to Cloud Cover and the foals. I want to apologize for being such a jerk, she said. I haven't been very cooperative, but if you guys hadn't persisted, I never would have gotten my first date with Thunderland, let alone our second one tomorrow. Think nothing of it, Cloud Cover insisted. As always, I'm glad to help out, and I think the kids were just as thrilled at the, to be a part of it. Yeah, I guess, said Skulu. I still think this business isn't for me, though. Me neither, Sweetie added. It's too stressful. That makes three of us, Apple Bloom said. Come on, girls. Let's go try something else for our cutie marks. Yay! <laughs> so bootleg. So bootleg. The other fillies chanted, and together the three of them looked, took off down the streets of Ponyville. Don't worry, Uncle Cloudcover, Pipsqueak said. I still think you've got the best job ever. Thanks, Pipsqueak, Cloudcover said. You're a bright young kid. Maybe you'll grow up to be a shipping pony someday, too. Maybe, Pipsqueak agreed. But for now, I've got some homework that needs to be finished. See you later, Uncle Cloudcover. Cloudcover watched his nephew disappear, leaving him alone with Flitter and Cloudchaser. By the way, Flitter giggled, sauntering up next to Cloudcover. While we're still on the topic of shipping, I can't help but wonder, are you doing anything tomorrow, Cloudcover? Oh ho ho! Flitter fluttered her eyelashes flirtatiously. Mmm, so delicious. Flirtatiously, I love that word. Cloudcover blushed, and Cloudchaser just groaned disbelievingly. You know what I like that word? Really, sis? Cloudchaser remarked. You're hopeless sometimes. Flitter stuck her tongue out to her sister. Hey, at least I can be direct when some pony catches my fancy, she argued. If you could do that, we wouldn't have to go through all this trouble. Cloud Chaser snorted. Whatever, go ahead and flirt then, she grumbled. Flitter ignored her, instead turning back to Cloud Cover. Her flank bunked into his again, and this time he was quite sure it was intentional. Well, she asked him. Cloud Cover chuckled. You know what? Why not? I'm not doing anything tomorrow. Great, see you then, Flitter said with a laugh before turning and l flying off with her sister. Cloudcover watched them for a moment, taking off himself. Candy Floss would be expecting a report on the new couple, but he'd probably be delighted to hear about this little development. Cloudcover flew into the opposite direction, listening to the barely audible conversation between the two sisters. There. See how easy it was, Cloud Chaser? Shut up, sis. Well, there you go, people. Another chapter of uh, this story, and... I'm going to go ahead and read the next chapter, so I don't have to read it again. <clears throat> I still would have laughed if it was Roid Rage that they were gonna get um shipped with. I just thought it would have been funny. <clears throat> <clears throat>
put my thoughts on the chapter. It's gonna be sad when this is over, really, really over, over, not just the story over. I thought that I have like a trouble with like reading ending the ends of stories because I get kind of bummed out and I'm like, oh, it's the end of the story, man. What am I gonna do now? Read another book? You know, but I don't really care, I guess. I do for the story, but I've cared for a lot of stories. Because I'm like the only person that reads anymore, like, for realsies. Books. Heard of them? <laughs> Alright. See you later, people. It is currently 7 7 2013. Something. Goodbye! See ya! Bye bye! Laughter! Yes, good! Bye bye!